Okay, guys. Start playing. Make some noise. Hi everybody, welcome to What's Going On. Thank you for tuning in again. I appreciate you. Uh, this is episode number four uh, of the new, new, new season. Today I have a very special guest. Um, she's been on television. She does comedy in Spanish and English. And she's one of my good friends here in New York. And I, I admire the crap out of her. So it's so nice. So good to have her on the podcast. Please welcome Carmen Lynch. Hola, señor. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Is this in English or Spanish? This was in Spanish. In Spanish? Dude, this was in English. Oh, See, I, I don't even say. know anymore. <laughs> This one's in English. The one in Spanish is La Comedia Mafia, which we want to have you. Sí, señor. But we're waiting on, My special. on your special, which you recorded recently. I recorded in Barcelona in July. Is that recent anymore? I don't know. It's almost November. Three months ago. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. But that's pretty awesome. So you did one in English and then back to back. One in Spanish. Never doing that again. Too much work. You know, it's not too much work doing them. It's too much work now editing them. Because there's yeah. different people doing different things, and my brain can't handle like who's the colorist or the sound mixer for this. What it? What did I want to fix on this one? Like it's oh. just, you know what? Next time, one at a time. Okay. That it was his historic though. I historic hope so. Though. It hasn't come out yet, so is it historic yet? <laughs> <laughs> it has the potential I to hope be his so. historic. I hope it's historic. How did you feel to uh, to do one in ink? Like I would, my brain would be a little confused there are words that were made up in the spanish one nice that um there was like one word that i got completely wrong and i called the editor and i was like can we just dub that or it's not gonna make it's gonna ruin the entire joke oh wow so i switched one word. it's very similar instead of um cannibal yeah i said carnivore which you know but it just didn't make sense yeah 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 yeah, yeah. did he get a laugh um, I don't even know because they laugh at me in Spanish. <laughs> they don't laugh with me sometimes. So I'm like, are you laughing at my accent or did I say something wrong? And then there are a couple of words that I left that the accent is in the wrong place. Oh. Like uh, a drought. Yeah. You know, like I say California has a drought. I say sequia. sequia. And it's sequia. Sequia. You know? And my yeah, sister. Yeah. yeah it's like somebody told my sister, I think, told me afterwards. And I was like, you know what? They can figure it out. How's your sister Spanish? Really good. I mean, she's lived in Barcelona now for 20 some years, but her English isn't that good. So that makes sense. I love that, too, because it's not fair. Like <laughs> how many she knows French fluently, you know, like how many languages do you get to learn? Like you, you know, a lot of languages, too. I know three. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that her English, like she'll say, she'll say things wrong and she'll, she'll be like, um, that's not wrong. I'm like, that's British and that's not American. So it's wrong. <laughs> that doesn't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, everyone, a lot of people here like speak Spanish or English in the British way. And I was like, well, you're an American. So speak up, speak Grow well. Up. No, I love the British, but, um, but she'll say, she'll come to New York and visit me and say things wrong. Like she'll say, um, let's go to Dwayne Reddy. Oh, wow. You know? And I'm like, read. It's read. <laughs> and then years ago when hummus became popular, yeah. I remember this so well. She's like, I love humus. And I was like, you're an idiot. It's That's hummus. That's so funny. So I say humus all the time now. And humus, she's like, it, it makes it makes it even more like exotic. Oh, I love the humus. <laughs> I think she thought of humid, like humidity. Yeah. And she called it humus, but now she denies everything. She's like, I never called it humus. Of I'm like, course. your English is so bad. It's practice. Yeah. It's all about practice. Yeah. That's it. That's what I, I, I find my French now is horrible. Really? Because I don't practice. I don't have anyone to speak to in French. But what, don't you go to Montreal every once in a while? Yeah, but it, it, like for a couple days. Like, yeah. It's, it's my third. So for me, it takes a, like I would have to do a set in French for me to get into like, okay, I'm going to do stand up in French. So I'm going to practice it, listen to things in, in French, get, because I, I find, I don't know how it is about with you, but it's about rhythm and practice. Yes. Like your brain has to get used to that. It's a flow. muscle. Yeah. Yeah. It's a muscle. Because after the English special, the taping, I went to Spain to do the Spanish one, but I had like three weeks in between. Mm -hmm. So I was like, get ready, turn English off and just start speaking in Spanish. Like, right. you know. But I couldn't because I got sick. I remember I had to go on antibiotics. I completely burnt out. Like after the English one, 
I don't know what happened. I got really sick. And I, I couldn't even speak any language. I was like <laughs> so tired. And then I went to Spain and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like you have a special in a week. Like get your, get, get your shit together. Do you do sets before that? I did a couple of sets, but I didn't have hours. Got Here's it. the other thing I did wrong. You always learn stuff, yeah. you know. I did it in the summer, like in Barcelona in July, everything shuts down. Oh. So a lot of the shows, they were like, yeah, we come back in September. We don't have a show right now. So oh, I did so Spanish too. <laughs> I know. So I did like ten minutes everywhere, which is not <laughs> helpful. Because you got to patch it all together. I have to patch it all together, and then I'm like asking people around, like, "How do you say this word? How do you say this word?" That's so funny. So it, yeah, it, it, that that I mean that makes a lot of sense. But I think that for someone like you, like every time I've seen you do stand up in Spanish, even if you don't know what the next thing you go prepare you I, I know you go with because i've seen you like okay this is a joke i'm gonna do it you're not really improvising you're like going in a little when, bit though when I you am. forget yeah. the word i think you're the best at going like you lean into it and then you're like como se dice yes. what? and then they say it and then you go bah, 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 like you yeah, say yeah, it yeah. and that is so freaking funny oh thank you but i have no choice because i don't know the word yeah so i'm like from the beginning i've always been like can you guys tell me what this word is but in new york everyone's latino yeah and they all have like five Variations. different words yeah. of saying so i'm like then i have to pick a word <laughs> and i i always pick the easiest one it's kind of like process of elimination like not you not you <laughs> too hard this one what was your word <laughs> and then i use that word and then i go somewhere and they're like yeah that's only mexican in colombia we say this yes. and i'm like oh come on that's the with spanish yeah. every country has its own way of expressing certain things like in colombia for instance we use coger all the time yeah like i'm gonna pick something up i'm gonna go and so you you're you're cogiendo everything yeah which in mexican means you're fucking it yeah. So, which is such a crazy transition. Well, why would it be such a broad? And they let yeah. you know right away because yeah, they yeah. they don't they let you say it several times. Like yeah. when I was in Mexico, I was like Marco de esa cosita. Like I want to pick up. This yeah, thing. yeah. Like, You're gonna okay. You want to fuck that? You want to fuck that? Yeah. And they every single person will let you say it, and they'll make fun of you. But it's it's such a like to grab. I guess grabbing is kind of sexual. Yes. You yeah. know. But that's like saying like in, you go to one country and a word is love and then you go to another one and it's like hate. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> like, that's a crazy transition. Like, that's huge. Can you think in English that same thing where you say something in the U.S. and it means so something totally different in England? The only thing I can think of is that Fanny here is ass and oh. Fanny there is like vagina. Yes. Like, I think it switches. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I mean, but that's oh, it. That's all I can think of. Mm, yeah, there's a few that I don't want to say because it might be people would be like, he said that word. But in oh, a, in, God, in, in England, the cig for cigarette. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That word. And then yes. and then here, but that, I don't know how cliche or how hacky that is. But it's yeah. always been a thing where like British people say that. I think there's expressions like there's all this guy to me every single time when they say taking the piss out of someone. Yeah. And it didn't make any sense when I was in London and I kept, kept using that. Like, oh, I'm taking the piss out of someone. I'm taking the piss out of someone. I was like, why, what does that mean? Yeah. Why are you taking the piss out of anybody? It's like, so oh, what no. is it again? It's making fun, fun of, of someone. Oh, 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 right. So, oh, we're taking the piss out of this person. And you were like, that doesn't sound nice. But that's like in, in Spain, they have all these phrases that make no sense. Me cago en la leche. <laughs> I, sh I shit on the milk. And you're like, what? That doesn't even translate to anything no. that would that would make sense. <laughs> Me cago en la leche has to be hands down one of the funniest things anyone could say. Me cago en la leche. Yeah, it's crazy. But it, it, I guess for Spanish culture, it makes sense because milk is, you need it. So when you say me cago en la leche, it's like, I'm going to shit in the milk so that everybody's fucked here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you say, I think you say it in... Like if the bridge is closed and you're trying to get somewhere and you're like, me cago la leche, ¿por qué está el puente cerrado? <laughs> sí. Like, you know, but it, it's like all the things you could say, that's what you pick, yeah. you know, or there, there's some that are like, 
Uh, me I think it's like I shit on your mother. Like there's a lot of weird ones. Me cago en la hostia. That's another la hostia, one. La hostia, the, which is the, the the chalice. The no, it's the it's the wafer. Oh, the wafer. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of that you you know. It's very churchy. Same French. It, it's every swearing thing in French is has to do with the church. Yeah. Like tabernacle, tabernacle. It's oh like, really? It's a very. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The crisis. Like it, it, everything's with Christ and the church, and that's a very, very European thing. I guess saying something better about the church in Europe is kind of like a big deal because everybody's Catholic. Yeah, yeah, but it's it it uh foreign curse words are so fun though. Like I'm sure French, I know shit is like merde or is something. It, yeah. But I'm sure once you get going, it's like, uh, like it's just beautiful. It's, it's yeah. like everybody, and it's very. Uh, French, Montreal French, Quebec French, the swearing is a lot more aggressive. Like French from France, they're a lot more calm. Soft, yeah. yeah. Not, they would never shit in the milk in uh, regular they, French. They, they, I don't know enough about French culture from France, but I, they, they're a little, at least it sounds more polite. Yeah. Which one's your favorite thing, in the favorite swearing in, f sp in Spanish? Spanish? French, yeah, from Spain. In Spanish, um, I would always say hostia, which is the, the wafer. Yeah. Um, there's something very powerful about saying the ones that you're not supposed to say, you know, and I grew up very Catholic. So that was just like, you don't say that. It's like, God damn it. God damn like, it. Yeah. and my dad is very religious and he, he would say that when like he was a hundred percent really pissed off, you know, just, it would just slip out, <laughs> you know, and he never cursed and he would just go right to God damn it. And I was like, damn dad you, you know you, you really bad boy you bad boy but i noticed that i do that too without even meaning to like when i the thing that pisses me off the most probably immediately is hitting my head because i've done it so many times because i'm tall you're tall you're very tall and 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 there's something in my brain that's like you should know by now <laughs> not to do that and I, when i don't it immediately comes out i'm like ostia or God damn it. Like those I are the two. It. And you grew up, so you grew up speaking English and Spanish. Both, yeah. But it, Spanish was at home. Spanish was in Spain at school um, from like age three to eight in Madrid and in Rota, which is near Sevilla, which okay. is in the south. So I kind of knew Spanish more when I moved to the States when I was eight. Oh, wow. That's cool. So, but then it, it, you know, over time it just, it switched. Yeah. It's interesting, but that's good because then you got that exposure to Spanish very young. Very young. But then I was speaking English wrong. Oh. Like I was, my brain was translating literal, literally. Yeah. And it sometimes it still happens and it's so embarrassing. Don't go to my coffee, kitty. Um, and sometimes it's embarrassing because I'll say something and I'm like, oh, wait, you don't Marla, say don't that. that, you know, hey, we have a cat. Those are look at that. She's trying to figure out that's tissues. That's not for you, Myla. It's not for you. It's just got coffee on it. Jesus, Myla. This is a problem with cats. They're so inquisitive. And I'm yes. actually amazed. She's normally a very afraid. Don't mess with the camera, please, of people. But you got good energy because she normally wouldn't come out like she that. She knows I like the kitties. Yeah. And. I, the thing that I've been noticing more, like, same, like I spoke Spanish first, that that I till I was ten, and I only started speaking English when I was like older, mm. and so it was easier for me to to understand like Spanish. I got it down, like I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I can always go back to that's my that's my native tongue. Like I don't have to worry about it. But my nephew, for instance, he's born here, he's grown up here. Uh, in Jersey and he's you could tell that because he goes to school in English and everything's in English he's like he doesn't want to speak Spanish I know that kind of bums me out about um, kids because they don't well they're not forced to speak they you know like my mom I mean she just couldn't speak English yeah so we were forced if you're going to communicate with your mother yeah. You're going to have to do it in Spanish. And if you're young enough, you don't know that they're tricking you. Yeah. You know, so I would literally look at my dad and be like, I don't want to go to school. And then look at her and be like, yo quiero una manzana. Like <laughs> it was just like how my brain was programmed because yeah. I, you know, they started from er early on. 
But if you know, yeah, if you know that you don't have to speak a language, you're not going to force yourself. My as a sister's kid. really good at it. She yeah. speaks to him in Spanish. She's yeah. very good at it. Like he understands. So when he, she's like, J- Jacob, like, don't do this, don't do that, do mm-hmm. this. She's, she's made the the point of like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to you in, in, in Spanish so that you understand it. It's just I feel because the environment is not like everything's in English, so he's less inclined to totally. say things to you in Spanish. Like I. I'm really bad because I'm I'm talking to him in in Spanish, but because he replies to me in English, then I reply back to him in English, and I'm like, no, it should be, I should do the homework and like do it back in Spanish so that he gets used to that. Because I find kids, if if it's not cool, they're not gonna do it. Right, unless yeah, excuse me, because I have dry. Throat. No, all good, all good. <laughs> and I find that that's that's. It probably used to be a lot more complicated or or just annoying in the 90s or the 2000s, like when culturally we weren't as open. Yeah. I find now we celebrate diversity and more. More. Yeah. Like it's okay. Oh, it's actually cool that you're bilingual. It's actually cool if you if you can speak a language with an accent. Like that's it's actually kind of cool. Fun. I know that used to be frowned upon. That used to be like, ooh, you speak weird. Yeah, yeah. People would bully you and make fun of you for. I, I had that. I had that too. And and the thing is, kids don't know. Like I remember moving to, uh, America when I was eight, and I would say things the wrong way, like in Spanish. In Spain, you can um, say a double negative. Yeah. And in English, you can't, but I would translate it literally. And I'd be like, I don't want no broccoli, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And my dad was like, no double negatives. And I was like, like, I didn't really understand that. Yeah. Um, But it took a while for that stuff to go away. And And your dad, did your dad speak Spanish? I mean, not really. He's, you know, he was just my English teacher kind of thing. And but, then mom was, say, and then you were a translator. Between and then the I, two. I, yeah, it, it, it was just, there were certain phrases that I didn't learn until I got to America and I learned them the hard way. <laughs> but, but every once in a while, I remember one time I was, I was grow, a grown up and my boyfriend at the time, I said something like totally Spanglish. Really? And he was like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> and I started crying. Like I, like any other day you would have thought I'd be like, oh, shut up. Uh, but something must have triggered an old yeah. thing. And it I was like, nerve. it hit a nerve. And I, I couldn't even believe I was crying. I was like, stop it. And I was like, what the fuck? That is <laughs> Isn't that crazy? amazing. I, yeah. I, I relate to that 1000%. Yeah. Because it's only when you're in a relationship and then you're talking to this person all the time that things that are weird about you just come out. They do. And like when I started dating and now my, my now wife, um, I make mistakes dramatically all the time. Yeah. And she, she does. She she's not lazy and saying like, that's not how you say that. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? It's not how you say that. So like, no the way that I pronounce something or like an expression or something like it just comes out wrong. Yeah. And it's because my brain is wired to think that that's totally fine to say. So she corrects you. She corrects me. (laughs) That's really good though, because my dad never corrected my mother and, uh, and she still says things wrong. (laughs) And I'm like, dad, if you had corrected her 40 years ago, she'd be fine. She'd be fine. But she, he just finds it all adorable and never said anything. That's, I think that there's a, there's, that's charming. That's kind of like endearing like that. You're like, Oh, that's a, Sometimes I find that I used to be a lot more defensive when uh-huh. I got corrected. Yeah. Like when I was in school or anyone would say, it's not pronounced this way, it's pronounced that way. I said, that, I said it like, the, like I would get very defensive. Yeah. About my accent, about the way that I was speaking. Right. Because I was insecure. Yeah. Because I was trying to prove a point. Right. I find that now I'm like way above. More comfortable. That, more comfortable. So for me, when I say something wrong, it's kind of like, who cares? Well, that's how we feel about doing stand up in Spanish is that at first I noticed it was very weird. It's like I, wa- I didn't mean to do it, but I did it. <laughs> I would speak with an a-, a-, a strong accent. I'd be like, hola, todos. Like, I can't even do it. It wasn't that strong, but it was different. Like, almost like 
Wow, uh, really? Purposely proving that I'm not Spanish. You're trying to let everybody know, just so you know, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm a gringa. Yeah. And then I would listen to the tapes and I was like, what am I doing? And now I'm like, hola, señores y señoras. And now I'm like, you know what? The words that are wrong, they'll slip out anyway. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, I was afraid. I don't know. It was just really Your weird. Your got in like, I remember the first time we did a show together, which was a, a long time ago. And it was good. You were yeah. always good. But I've seen your recent stuff in Spanish. And it's like, oh, my God. So like it's perfect. It's like it's oh, so thank you. much like you're conf- you're stronger. Everything about you in Spanish is like, man, that's really cool. Because you're doing what you're doing in English and Spanish and you're killing in the same way. There's definitely, thank you. There's definitely a more of a, okay, whatever happens, I don't care. And you know, you'll know this from doing a Spanish podcast, but like the one I have with Luis Chatang, like doing that every week. Yeah. That helps. Just like time. an hour of Spanish conversation every week is, you need it. is so helpful. We do it. I do it with Pedro. We do a YouTube <laughs> live every, every Wednesday and He's the one that's correcting me in Spanish. Yeah. Because I make mistakes in Spanish for some reason. Well, like there's expressions or words. Like I I translate like whatever we were saying in English. Oh, I don't want to be subjected to certain things. Yeah. And then in in in, in Spanish, I'd say, no quiero ser subjetivo a algo. Yeah. And then he's like, that no, you don't say subjetivo. Like, yeah. So he's very, Pedro's very good at like knowing grammar. Like he's a very grammatically, yeah. Because he was a translator before. Oh, perfect. That was his, his day job. Yeah. So he he knows grammar more than I do. Yeah. I learned it just by speaking. Yeah, same. Both. I mean, like, I'm my reading in both is horrible, and that's also because I'm dyslexic. So yeah, yeah. No, but Luis on our podcast, he he's the same way. Like, I'll be like, you know that word, and thank God he knows English very well. So I'll be like, you know, hypersensitive. And he's like, give it a da. And I'm like, he knows it. Yeah. He's you like my teacher on there. Hypersensible. Yeah. But, but you know what? I, I don't know if this is uh, for you. When you're doing things now in both, you can just go back and forth and you don't even, you don't even try to like think about in, it too much. In everyday conversation? Yeah. More so. But I don't know if this happens to you, but I reach a point I've noticed when I'm in Spain where I'm only talking in Spanish, almost like a, the 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 jar is full and it needs to like the faucet is yeah. like I, I'm like, can someone just speak English to me? Yeah. Like I'm so <laughs> tired of trying. Like even if it comes out easily, there just comes a point where I'm like, I need to speak English. English yeah. And thank God my sister and I speak English. So I speak Spanish to everyone. But then she and I are like, dude, what's up? And I'm like, oh, Thank you. Yeah, it's just slightly flowier, and it just feels good. Yeah, cause um, yeah, that makes sense. I, I, f- I used to feel that way. Now I, I've reached the point where I would say, I'm one hundred percent, one hundred percent bilingual. Meaning, I could be talking to you in Spanish and then yeah. switch to English and yeah. have no idea that I did that. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's it makes me feel like oh, I. I have I've achieved that level of confidence yes. in in I'm, I'm I'm a I'm a bilingual person but then I've neglected French so now mm. French when I'm saying anything in French I can't it doesn't come out I need to practice it oh, and I'm yeah. thinking about it's like I'm I'm reaching like HR like in yeah. my brain they're like okay is this okay to say and then HR's like yeah you're good do you people ask me this all the time and I never know how to answer so I want to hear your answer do you dream in English or Spanish or French? I used to only dream in Spanish. Uh huh. And now it's com- like I could have a dream where my mom is talking to me in English. Yeah. Where she doesn't speak English very well, but in the dream she speaks English. She's totally talking. To Are me you in English. serious? That's and so it's cool. So weird because I yeah. wake up and I'm like, did my mom was just like talking to me in English? So the dreams, like, like I don't perceive whether it's in Spanish or English anymore. Yeah. It's just, it just is. If my mom spoke to me in English in a dream, I think I'd fall out of the bed. <laughs> that would be so creepy. If she just randomly started speaking English, it would be so weird. But you so know, in weird. the dream, I know it's not my mom. I mean, I'm like, wait a second. Oh. It's like, I know it's my mom, but then the halfway through, you're like. It's another lady. 
something's going on. It's another actor playing your mother. Yeah, and it's like, oh, that, okay. I don't notice it, but then later I, I, I think about the dream. And it's like, oh, that wasn't my mom. Yeah. But in the dream, I think is my mom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have those too. But I don't really talk a lot in my dreams. So when people ask me if I dream in English or Spanish, I'm like, it's just video. It's just like on it's mute. It's just me listening. Yeah, I'm just like watching and there's pictures. My dreams are so short. They're very, I mean, as far as I can remember. Yeah. Like I'll fall asleep and I'll see like something happen and then I'll just be like, it's on to the next thing. It's very weird. Is it maybe because of comedy? I, I think I've I've had a harder time falling asleep now that comedy has gotten super busy. Mm -hmm. I My brain is wired. Yeah, I'm way more wired now. I have to listen to a podcast. Like I try not to take any pills, sleeping pills, or even like you know, the natural ones. I try to just, I'll find like somebody with a really soothing voice. That helps. And fall That's asleep. That's nice. Yeah. I had, I have to do gummies. Or, oh, or you something. do? Yeah. My brain is on. Like yeah. I get home and I'm thinking of like, I need to edit this, do this. Yeah. Tomorrow I have two spots. Then I have to go in between this. Do you make a list at night? Cause sometimes that'll help. Cause I it, it takes, it takes your mind off. If you're like, I'll just make this list for the, for tomorrow. And then it kind of you like let it go because you won't forget because it's on the on the list and then go to bed. I want to try that. Try that. I, I hyper fixate too. I, if something happens, like if we have a conversation and then you say something that I didn't totally understand or, yeah. it, was or it made me feel weird, then I yeah. fixate on that. I understand for that too. Hours. Yeah. And I'm like, what did she mean by that? But that's like, that's a reason I don't, when I see someone left me a voicemail or an audio. Cause you know, I don't know if you're like this with friends, but we don't barely even talk on the phone now. We just yeah. text or we d leave audios. If I see that, I'm like, I can't, I can't listen to that. Cause I'll get, I'll get fixated. I'm going to listen to it in the morning. Yeah. And and then there's no way to reach someone at like 1130. You're and then like, you're just yeah. going to, you're just going to like be in bed. Like I'll, yeah, yeah, totally. All right. So we've already done 27 minutes. As I oh. said, this is a very sweet, uh, just cut to the chase. I really just want to, I wanted to, have you and pick your brain on being bilingual okay doing bilingual stuff and i i find i don't know sometimes i find like doing 30 minutes is not enough but on I, the podcast on the podcast but i also think that people don't listen to more than 45 or whatever yeah so. well do you have any other questions that you want to throw in let's let's do one one final question and, and then we'll wrap it up i guess and this is something that I mean, I'm, I'm having issues with, so I'm going to ask you that. Are Now that you're doing English and Spanish so much, are you having difficulty in English sometimes? Like your flow has been slowed down a little bit. Yes. And I don't know. It's weird. Yes. And I realized that a couple years ago where I was like, are you going to commit to doing it in Spanish? Because this is not going to change. Because the thing is, when people hear, oh, you're doing English and Spanish, that's so cool. They're almost hearing like, oh, you're so lucky you get to do it in two languages. But what's really happening instead is you're splitting your time and you're doing half and half. So it's not like it's twice as much. It's like, okay, English has to back up to make room. We only have one life yep. and the same number of hours that everyone else does. Yeah. So you're not practicing your English stuff as much. And when I became aware of that, I was like, oh, you know. But I also like doing it in both. Like imagine, like say these two specials come out and one, the Span let's just pretend the Spanish one does really well. And then I started doing stuff in Spanish. I would have to like stop doing English for a while because yeah. you want to go where you're wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's where things are going. So, yeah. So it's like you kind of have to take that chance. And you're good at it. So that's another Thank thing you. that... That's what I find too, and and I feel that that's hit record again here. Just that's what I find that I I have fun doing it in both. Uh, obviously, English has always been my priority. It's always mm -hmm. been I started in English. All my comedy heroes are people that have done it in English. So for me, the idea of doing stand up has always been English. Yeah. However, ever like ever since I started doing it in Spanish, it's like 
you know what in, in English you get a little jaded sometimes like it happens yes. to me it's oh, like yeah. oh yeah. this thing again the politics and the thing yeah. and it's like oh I wish I, I, I got that thing and I wish I was then when I started doing it in Spanish it was like a a refresh totally a relief a, a relief yeah. and yeah. I, it, it felt refreshing to just start doing it again because i want it and because i felt good and because it was like this novelty and this new thing and crowds were super fun and it felt like oh man this is like a brand new thing that is not there's not enough people doing it well also you're doing it you're doing something new with the experience when you first do english you're doing something new but you have no experience exactly. and now you're like i'm gonna take all of my stand-up experience and shove it into a new language and that's refreshing too like i remember i'm sure this happened to you but like when you first started doing it in spanish i remember when i first started doing it in spain um i would do a showcase with like six or seven comics and i'd done it in spanish maybe five times like super new yeah and they would headline me on the show and i'm like what are you doing i've <laughs> never done this in spanish i've done it like five times and they're like but you can tell you can tell you you're seasoned you're yeah and i'm like that's interesting that like sure i had more experience in stand-up but even if my jokes were like choppy they were like people in the audience were like i can tell just the way yeah. your demeanor on exactly stage. yeah that's 100 percent true because when we start, when I started doing it in Spanish, I winged ninety nine percent of my sets. Yeah, and I was just go. But to me, it was different because it felt like I can just speak in Spanish and people are laughing. Yeah. So it was it was a whole different because in English I always had that it was probably like the inverse for you. Yeah. Because for me it's like doing it in Spanish was kind of how are you. I thought it was just an English thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I started making fun of Peruvians, I started making fun of Cubans, when I started making fun of Colombians, and everybody's dying, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Because these are conversations that I would have with my mom, couldn't be translated, yep. couldn't say that in English, no one would give a shit, no one would get it. And all of a sudden, I'm like doing this in Spanish in front of a group of people that only speak Spanish. And that's what got my attention. And I was like, I need to put effort, I need yes. to work on this. It, and then and then it just became part of the day to day and part of like the social media now okay i'll do the I, i'll ask you the, the last question okay. and then we'll can wrap it up i promise now do you think you need a two different social medias mm. or one that's a great question because i still wonder about that like the only one that i have that's spanish is spanish instagram um but that was mostly because of the podcast, because I didn't want to keep throwing too much Spanish on the English one. Yeah. Because I didn't want people to be like, ugh, you know, yeah, like Carmen, enough. Come on. We get it. Because like, you headline in English. So for you, if you have a bunch of, if you pick up a bunch of followers in San Francisco and then they they see a lot of Spanish and they're like, ah, yeah, they not might, interested. yeah, they might just unfollow. Yeah. So, um, but it does start to feel like twice as much work. And now I have a double personality kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it's a lot. Yeah. Because um, I had this conversation with Fabricio and Pedro and they're like, they're dividing their, well, it, it, they're on, like their main one is in English and they're only put in English. Yeah. Fabricio opened up a new one in Span and for English and he's Spanish one. He's only doing Spanish. Although he mixes his stuff sometimes. Sometimes I think it's good to cross like promote. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. I'm 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 going I'm going to take the gamble of only having one. Yeah. Just because it's too much work. Yeah, and I noticed that after a while like I haven't posted in my Spanish one in a while. Um but yeah, sometimes I'll post Spanish stuff on the English one cuz you still want people out there to know you're bilingual yeah. cuz you never know who's going to see it. Yeah. So you want the one with the most followers to, you know. But um but at the same time, like I thought I'd be posting more stuff on the Spanish one, but you know, you have a life. There's other things I want to do. And yeah. I don't know. It's, it just, it's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Carmen, thank you so much for coming over here. Of course. Talking to me about bilingual comedy. Uh, is there anything, so you have a comedy special in English that's going to come out. It's already come out. I have not yet. I have one in English, um, that should be coming out soon. And then I have one in Spanish that I'm, Oh, actually, the English one I'm has a title. I just haven't announced it yet. 
But the Spanish one, I'm just calling Carmen Lynch en Español <laughs> because I want people to understand that it's yeah. not my language. That's Do you awesome. know what I mean? That's awesome. So I'm like, I need to call it, this is me in Spanish. That's like when, when they translate those movie titles. Uh-huh. And then, you know, like whatever movie is called like, like The Social Dilemma. Uh-huh. Right? In French is Le Facebook Movie. Oh, really? <laughs> hilarious really it's kind of like yeah they're like all right we get it you guys weren't gonna go like like dilemma like, social, social no yeah the facebook movie it's, it's like That's it's like so it's like funny. oh wow we get it yeah let everybody know what it is yeah yeah this is just me in spanish <laughs> yeah take it or leave it that's funny um so hopefully they will still come out on the same day yeah um within the next month hopefully good and uh but my my instagram in english is Carmen Comedian, and in Spanish, it's Carmen en Español. Carmen en Español. Sí. And you have a podcast in Spanish with Luis Chatein. With Luis Chatein called Podría Ser Peor, and one in English on Sirius XM called, um, oh my gosh, see, my brain doesn't flip as quickly, um, The Human Centipod. Oh, that that's the one you do with your boyfriend. The one I do with my boyfriend, who speaks no Spanish, and <laughs> that, that one's all in English, and that's it. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you. I've always been a big fan of yours. I'm so happy that I get to call you my friend. And, and it's always fun to hang out with you. And uh, listen to uh, this podcast. You can listen to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe, give it a like, uh, share it with your friends. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Santiago Comedy. And thank you so much for supporting. And uh, we appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Guys, start clapping. Make some noise. Love it, man. Where is this hip? Yes,